Several decades ago, uh, the BVI faced an uncertain future when a double taxation treaty between the BVI and the United States was canceled un unilaterally by the U.S. government. Facing an uncertain future, the vision of its leaders and ingenuity, ingenuity of its technocrats and friends, the BVI created the International Business Companies Act. However, it was not until the invasion of Panama, some years later by the same United States of America, that you are able to realize the true, uh, the true potential of the IBC Act, International Business Companies Act. What happened then is that the companies that were registered in Panama, which I think at that time might have been the biggest register of companies in the world, or one of the largest, the companies came from Panama and they came to the BVI. That catapulted the BVI into the international arena as a global player in international business. It was a game changer for the BVI. <coughs> Today we look at the, the IBC Act, it's been, been amended a couple times, uh, recently quite substantially, and it's now the Business Companies Act. And we see that, it's quite fitting that we are in the International Finance Center's office, uh, BVI Finance, we now call them, that we should be here for an event such as this. This, the IBC Act again was a game changer, and today, the Premier is about to come to us with another game changer. So I'd like to invite him to the podium to tell us what he has in store for us today. Every year for the last decade, more than 400,000 persons visited the BVI, and that number is growing. However, a majority of those visitors are finding it increasingly difficult to get here due to the inadequacy of air access largely precipitated by the departure of American Eagle from its hub in Puerto Rico. This is compounded by the inadequate length of the runway at the T.B. Latham International Airport. We know what the result has been. A severe reduction in flights from the BVI and into the BVI, increasing difficulty in assessing and leaving the BVI, both for ourselves and our visitors, and high ticket prices. Early last year, I pledged to the people of this territory that within my tenure and the next electoral cycle, my government will solve the problem of air access to and from the British Virgin Islands. While we continue to work tirelessly on the extension of the airport of the runway, I also pledge to provide for direct flights to and from the United States mainland from the Terence Pilatum International Airport. Today, it is my special pleasure to announce that we have made good on that promise of direct flights to and from the United States mainland by partnering with BVI Airways to have direct flights between the Terence B. Latham International Airport and the Miami International Airport. Direct flights between Miami and BVI will commence in the fall of this year. The fall may sound like a long way away, but as our partners will explain shortly, there's a lot of preparation required to get those planes to fly full to and from Miami. This is a vital and significant development in our quest for better air access to the territory, but it is only a first step. The second step requires that we expand the TB Latham International Airport runway to accommodate regular flights to and from the eastern seaboard of the United States. And while that project is going forward, we have provided for three agreement with the BVI Airways as an interim workable solution. I'll go further. Today's announcement is a game changer for our economy, both in tourism and financial services. For some time now, even before the cessation of American Eagle flights to the BVI, this territory has struggled with air accessibility issues. Visitors to our shores are spending more time to get here, often having to overnight in places in which they have no interest, and at times arriving without luggage, which is for them most frustrating. Needless to say, this is an unnecessary loss of revenue to the BVI economy and a recipe for disaster for our tourism industry. It should concern us all that our competitors have much better air access than we do, 
with direct flights to and from major international destinations. And it certainly does not help that that sleeping giant Cuba has awakened from its long slumber. <clears throat> Since the cessation of flight by American Eagle to the BVI, our air access problems have gotten worse. The time loss and inconvenience faced by having to take ferries or smaller feeder flights to get to BVI has caused many visitors to choose other destinations in the Caribbean and Latin America, thereby undermining our competitiveness. These logistical dynamics have also made it very difficult to attract hotel development into the territory and to grow our tourism product that provides a livelihood for the majority of our people and our residents. Indeed, our ability to increase the value-added component of the financial services sector has also been constrained by air access. And a newly launched arbitration center is in jeopardy of being undermined due to the difficulties associated with getting to the BVI. The constant demand by citizens and residents that government continues to improve the services of the public as well as provide additional services means that we have to remain on the proverbial cutting edge of new revenue ideas without imposing an undue burden on our people. Notwithstanding, we must at all reasonable costs protect the revenue stream that we do have. If that means continuing with the hard work we have been doing in the financial services industry, then that is what we will do. If it means ex extending the runway at TB Latham International Airport, we are duty bound to do so. And if it means positively addressing airlift on this occasion through a partnership with BVI Airways, then that is what we are doing. We all know that our ability to, for economic development in the BVI today is limited by our ability to participate in the global marketplace through the quick and expeditious movement of people to and from the Virgin Islands. Today's signing is indicative of my government's resolve to do all that we can to maintain and improve our economy for the benefit of present and future, gener future generations of BVI landers and residents. The McKinsey report that was commissioned in 2014 by my government to investigate the required steps that we need to be taken by the BVI to remain competitive and relevant into the future was presented to the people of the Virgin Islands in 2015. In that report, air access was noted as a key and vital component to the successful future of the BVI. I'm glad that we are able today to implement yet another of those excellent recommendations. Ladies and gentlemen, part of a long-term strategy has always been careful, responsible, inward investment into the BVI. Our pursuit of this strategy has always highlighted the severe restrictions that quick and easy access to the territory poses to the willingness of foreign investors to come to the BVI. If we continue to leave the matter of air access unsolved, we will unduly and unnecessarily threaten the economic pillars upon which we depend for our survival. It is fundamentally critical to our continued economic viability and important to our long-term economic development strategy that we overcome the issue of air access as a matter of highest priority. Direct access to us then means that we should be able to get to a major international hub from which direct flights from major metropolitan centers around the world can connect to flights that directly fly to and from the British Virgin Islands. As a result, we expect consequential infrastructural development in the tourism sector, higher participation of BVI businesses and activity outside of the BVI, and ultimately more employment opportunities for our people. The partnership with BVI Airways is meant to fill the immediate need to solve our air access issues and constitutes another investment by my government in the continued development of the BVI economy and its people. Our venture will be about <clears throat> this venture, sorry, our investment in this venture will be about $7 million over a three year period with the expectation that this will be recouped once the venture is successful, as we fully expect it to be. It is an investment being made with a clear understanding that without relatively easy and reliable air access to and from the British Virgin Islands, we will struggle to provide for the traveling needs of our people, 
to bring officers to the territory and to remain competitive in the main economic sectors of tourism and financial services. Think back with me to those years when our flag the graced the skies of the Caribbean from as far south as Dominica to as far north as the Dominican Republic as the Air BVI traversed to and from these locations. Today I'm proud to be part of a venture where our flag would again ply the airways, this time as far north as the United States of America. I want to thank Mr. Lester Hammond, Mr. Bruce Bradley, and the other members of the BVI Airways team for being instrumental and persistent, and for working with us assiduously to make direct air access from B Miami to the BVI a reality. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reason to let our hearts fill with pride as we participate in this game-changing venture that will pave the way for even greater things to come in air access to the BVI. It is my honor and distinct privilege today to present this great undertaking to you, the people of the BVI, on whose behalf my government continues its hard and tireless work. Thank you. Uh, the chairman of the board to say a few remarks to us. Good morning. As a habit, as chairman of the BVI Tourist Board, I rarely speak on any matter of tourism after the premier. After all, when he speaks, our role at the board is to move to implementation. If Honorable Stout, H.L. Stout, that is, was here today, he would undoubtedly, undoubtedly declare this an auspicious occasion. And it is indeed for our territory. In today's fiercely competitive global marketplace, consistent, reliable, and competitive air access is the lifeblood of any modern economy. Whether it's London trying to remain the dominant business and financial center of Europe, Dubai trying to maintain its posture as a crossroads to Asia, or St. Vincent with their new airport trying to hitch their economy to the global tourism market. For the BVI with an economy dominated by tourism and financial services, two very competitive sectors, it is absolutely critical for the territory's continued success that this venture to establish direct, direct flights to North America is successful. Today's announcement is more than about direct flights to Miami. It is actually a statement about the future of the BVI and our collective well-being. It's about the BVI stepping up to the plate and making sure that the quality of life that we become accustomed to is sustainable. Simply put, it's about the territory being globally competitive. It's about access to the marketplace, whether you're in tourism, financial services, real estate, or whether you operate a car rental, a taxi, a restaurant, a villa, or an inn. As in the case of my good friend, Kito Reimer, who all have seen, he's torn down his place and he's rebuilding it. It spells hope for our young entrepreneurs who for the first time might be planning to enter the growing tourism sector, but had doubts about accessing the market. When one looks look at our major competitors regionally, both in tourism and financial services, all of them, Bermuda, Cayman, the Turks and Caicos, Bahamas, St. Lucia, St. Kitts, and Grenada, etc., have all enjoyed long and successful direct access to North America and beyond. You can no longer be a global player, or for that matter, taken seriously, if you cannot connect seamlessly to the global marketplace. It is the same whether you're a small business, or the national economy, such as the BVI. So what will this connection to Miami mean in a very practical way for the BVI and its economy? It will enhance the ease of getting here to use a commercial court, a court that is globally recognized and respected. It will remove one of the single largest challenges to establishing the BVI as an arbitration center. Now that the premier, now when the premier approaches investors and he's asking them about investing in the BVI, he will, and they respond to him, well, how are we gonna get our visitors here? He will no longer have to say, we are looking at the matter. As a tourism destination, we will be, the f <clears throat> we will be for the first time taking charge of our future in a collective way and building on our objectives at the Tourist Board and the government of building a year-round tourism destination. We will be tapping into, able to tap into new markets expanding our annual calendar of events and growing new ones and growing such events as Lobster Fest, doing more in sports tourism. We will also have an airline that for the first time we'll be able to partner with for our summer and fall packages. 
<clears throat> Additionally, this flight also has the potential to, to create completely new business opportunities. One such area of potential could be in sourcing new markets for our fish, for commercial and specialty markets. Think for a moment. What prevents Anagata lobsters from being on menus in New York, London, Hong Kong, or Miami? I'll tell you, it's a direct access. From Miami, if I may say so, the world will be our oyster. <laughs> Making this initiative a success will require all of us working together, both the public and private sectors. The Premier's government must be commended for taking a bold step into the future. Now it's our collective responsibility to step up to the plate and make it a success. At the BVI Tourist Board, we are excited about this new promise that this venture will afford to the destination to deepen our tourism business. In closing, I want to commend Bruce and his team for partnering with the BVI and this initiative. The negotiations, I must say, were long, they were difficult, and at, time I, at times, I know you both, you all wondered whether or not we were ever going to get to this point. The Premier, to his continued credit, persevered. As you see, perseverance is in our DNA. At a personal level, in closing, I look forward to the first flight landing at the TB Letzum Airport and the Premier disembarking, followed by a long line of visitors. Thank you. Uh, I'll now invite um, Biva Airways to respond. Very pleased to be here today for this very exciting announcement and for our new partnership with the BVI government. Uh, as Premier said, it's uh, been a long time in the making um, and uh, we are uh, incredibly excited with the leadership that's been provided and uh, the working relationship that we've had with the Premier in particular with um, Secretary uh, Neil Smith with uh, Russell Harrigan, and um, uh, it's a big day uh, for the BVI government and uh, for tourism, we hope. Um, we uh, are going to be offering, um, you know, with the launch of this, the airline will be up and running in approximately nine months, and we're excited to offer a uh, competitive convenient and luxurious alternative to what's there today. Uh, we think this will help enormously in fueling high-end tourism. We have uh, seen this with many of the, the other neighboring governments that have made a big investment in uh, airlift and the impact that it's had in a very short period of time. Um, so again, very excited. I want to introduce my partners, Scott Weisman and Jerry Willoughby, and with their uh, better voice, I'll let them get into the details of this. So thank you very much. Uh, first, uh, everyone, thank you all. We're delighted to be here. Uh, when we first made our investment in BVI Airways almost a year and a half ago, this was always part of the idea. Uh, the idea was to leverage our turboprop uh, business with the uh, regional jet business to bring direct service into Beef Island. Uh, it has taken us a lot longer, as things seem to take here, but in general, we're delighted that we're finally here. Uh, we want to thank the, pre the Premier for his tireless effort, and Neil Smith in particular, for putting up with us as we sort of ground through the minutia of getting to this particular point. Uh, I know a couple of people have asked us, well, why can't we start flying tomorrow? And uh, we probably can. The regulators of the United Kingdom would be upset with us, but we can start, we can start flying. Uh, this process requires us to get approvals in London and approvals in Washington. So the primary issue for us in terms of the timing and what it, why it takes so long is regulatory approvals and marketing. Obviously, we don't want to fly airplanes empty. Obviously, we want to make sure the airline is profitable. Uh, we want to return capital back to the government. We want to make sure we have the ability to provide the best service possible for the most rational price. Uh, some people have asked, you know, is this going to be cheaper than what's available now? The answer is yes, it has to be. And one correction, it's a two and a half hour flight, not a three and a half hour flight. So uh, it's a dramatically easier. Uh, 
Our general thought process is we're going to start with three flights on a weekly basis, and as demand builds, which we are highly confident it will, we expect to do, go to at least one flight a day, and in the high season, probably two to three flights a day. It's a very compelling story to both the investing community as well as to the uh, traveling uh, world. It's always been a hard place to come to, always been a very difficult place to reach, and that has created an allure to the island, by the same time it has created a barrier to entry. We think that having direct service on a very luxurious plane with a first-class cabin and with a gourmet meal will transform the travel experience. Uh, I'd like to introduce my partner, Jerry Willoughby. Uh, Jerry has 35 years in the aviation industry, starting first as a general of the United States Air Force, heading over to Delta, where he flew large large aircraft and then doing a cargo startup. We are delighted that we have not only the resources that are financial, marketing with Bruce who understands how high-end properties work, but also someone who knows how to make airplanes fly. It is not an easy business. It requires all three skills to execute this very difficult uh, type of uh, airline. Jerry, I'd like you to come up and talk a little bit about the operation and sort of next steps in the BVI. Thank you. Certainly our privilege and honor to be in front of you today to uh, add our voice to the what we think is a real game changer for all the various sectors, uh, not only tourism, but financial services, and, and just every day that uh, islanders that want to get back and forth to the U.S. mainland on a seamless and uh, painless, I might add, way. I actually live on the West Coast, and like I said, it takes me two days to get here. Well, we'll change that where people from the West Coast We'll be able to get here in one day. We'll time our departures out of Miami so that we get the flow uh, not only from the northeast quarter sector but from the west coast, which would be Los Angeles, California, uh, San Francisco, and even Seattle to connect into our flights. So it'll be an afternoon flight uh, coming out of the U.S. mainland, arriving here, and then morning flights uh, out of here to connect on into destinations not only in the U.S. mainland um, but uh, the Caribbean, uh, other parts of the Caribbean, Central South America, and even on to Europe. Uh, we'll work very care carefully with some of our international partners to have a seamless uh, uh, interline agreements so that your bags can be checked through, so it'll be a lot less hassle than you, you've had before. Just a moment, talk about our aircraft. It's a, it's a regional RJ-85. We'll have it configured in an 86-seat configuration, a very, very nice high-end first-class section and uh, a nice uh, leather-covered seats uh, in the, in the uh, coat section. And uh, like I said, it's about a two hour and a half, two hour, 40 minutes, depending on the winds, um, uh, from going back and forth. So we think it will be uh, uh, an enjoyable flight, much more uh, enjoyable than you've had to, to endure going through various other places to get back and forth. So with that, uh, we will um, work very diligently with uh, both our U.S. regulators and uh, our regulators in London, in fact, uh, Scott Weissman and I are traveling next week to be, not begin that process, but meet face to face with our government regulators, which are ASSI. Um, they've committed to us uh, to work diligently so that uh, we will meet the fall start update. We don't anticipate any problems with that, although there's an awful lot of work to do on our part. We're anxious that during this process of the next nine months to meet with many of you, particularly in the tourism industry and the financial services, to see how we can cooperate and work together to ensure the success of this operation. Uh, once again, a game changer for us all. Thank you for coming today, and we look forward to meeting all of you. Are we becoming convinced? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's, I was just corrected by a sailor, Scott. Yes, about the time to fly to Miami. Yes, you are correct. Um, and I guess it's, even for me, it's a bit shocking to be able to do that distance in that short a bit of time. Uh, it usually takes us the whole morning to get to Miami. And um, I think that <laughs> the whole day for you also. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a big deal. Um, for me, I'm quite interested in it because of the ability to go to the United States and get back in the same day, which is, is in really a good thing for us in the BVI, for the business community especially. 
Uh, but at this point, I'd like to invite Julian up to the, the podium to make some remarks. He's the director of the of BVI Finance. Right? It is my pleasure to welcome you to BVI Finance's fairly new offices, if you haven't been before. I think notwithstanding the uh, significant news for tourism, I think this is a fitting place for this event to be held. The issue of air access into the territory and the impact it has on tourism uh, is easy to see. The connection can easily be made between access into the country and heads in the beds, which is a term I, I learned while serving under the good chairman here on the tourist board, or heads in the berths, as it, it may apply to us. Ease of access, efficient connection, seamless transfers are all good for tourism business. The reality, though, is that access into and out of the BVI is equally critical for the other side of our economy, financial services. As we all know, the BVI is home to many of the world's major financial services players. We are home to a melting pot of professionals from every corner of the globe. Professionals who travel frequently for business, to reconnect with family and friends, and to explore other interests. Professionals whose time is as valuable to them as the money in their bank accounts. Any development that makes it easy to travel to and from the BVI will have significant value to anyone who calls the BVI home. The Premier mentioned in his remarks the various key initiatives from the McKenzie report that the government is working steadfast to implement. A key one of those recommendations deals with the issue of added value services and further diversification of our financial services industry. These are exciting times for financial services. We are reinventing key sectors and exploring key frontiers, new frontiers, new products, new markets, and a new vision. We are working to position the BVI to be more competitive globally and to take an even bigger bite of the proverbial pie. BVI Finance, for example, has recently launched a comprehensive review of the insurance sector with an end goal of repositioning this sector for growth. A key part of this growth will have to involve attracting new major players in the captive insurance world to operate from our shores. A similar exercise is taking place in the funds, in the mutual fund sector. Attracting business to the BVI means creating an environment that is friendly for business. Any company cons seriously considering doing business in the BVI will thoroughly evaluate the ease and practicality of doing business from within our shores. They will consider many things, including the ease of getting to and from the BVI. Investors into our economy have to be able to get in and get out and get back in again, quickly and efficiently. The Premier mentioned the newly established Arbitration Centre, the success of which is based largely in part in users of the centre being able to get to the BVI quickly and easily. The same rings true for our commercial court, as was mentioned earlier. We are also courting new markets, Latin America, for example. As we re build relationships in that part of the world, it becomes even more critical to have quick and efficient access into the ter territory from places like Brazil. With the advent of this new service, a trip from Sao Paulo to BVI would be possible with one connection. Sao Paulo, Miami, Beef Island. That is truly fantastic news. The impact that this new service will have on the potential growth of our financial services industry cannot be understated. It is a giant step in the right direction that we are confident will snowball into even greater direct access into the BVI in the coming years. So, Honorable Premier, on behalf of BVI Finance, and I hope I can speak for the wider financial services industry, I congratulate you and all the others on your team who are undoubtedly involved in making this a reality. I also congratulate the principals of BVI Ways on this new venture. From a financial services perspective, I could not agree more that it is indeed a game changer. It will open doors that we feared had been shut. It will also speak even more confidently about the BVI's readiness to grow industry and venture into new areas. This is a monumentous achievement for the BVI that I am confident will bear many fruit and will further cement our position as a leading in financial services center. I thank you. We have come to the close of this uh, event, actually. I really think that this is an opportune time, premier, to thank yourself and your government for the work that you do. And not just your government, but the entire House of Assembly as well. The careless work that they do. I think, as well, it is clear that we are on the move forward. And I'd like to uh, also thank everybody 
in the civil service, in the government, in the country, and the stakeholders that are here for moving the BVA forward. We have a lot to do. We are small fish in a big pond, which means, like the Israelis, that we have to be very good at what we do in order to survive. To survive. And I'm glad for the opportunity that BVA Airways has given us to take one step towards that. Premier here, you're gonna, you said that you're going to be signing a contract for the airport soon. That is, uh, you said so, in Max. <laughs> so I'm going to hold you to that, Chief. Uh, and I'd like to thank everyone as well for coming, and I hope that you have a very good day. Tuesday, January 12th, was a historic day in the British Virgin Islands. In fact, a red-letter day as the Premier and the Minister of Finance, Dr. the Honorable D. Orlando Smith, made a game-changing announcement. Direct flights from the Virgin Islands to Miami. BVI Direct. On this program, we have heard and spoken to a number of stakeholders within the tourism and the financial services industry who have shared their views and perspectives. Here with me to discuss more about this game-changing event is the Minister for Communications and Works, as well as Aviation, Honorable Mark Vanderpool, and he is going to tell us more about what this means in terms of aviation and going forward. Well, overall, as a government, uh, we're very pleased. Uh, the Premier has been forging ahead with this. We give him full support. Um, we want to make sure that we have a lot more access to the territory in the outlook in the future, and we are working towards that. Um, of course, access means that uh, direct access makes a major difference rather than making several stops. Um, I, I, so we look forward to this making a major change in what we do. And as we do other things to improve it, development of the airport and other things, we believe that the future is bright. <laughs> and so we want to make sure that people understand that we're working hard towards that. It takes a little while sometimes for some of these things to come to fruition, but they've been the planning stages. We have moved to another stage now where this is ready to go. And hopefully this year, later this year when it's delivered and the first flight arrives, I am very excited about it. So we look forward to that. And we give our premier full support on it. Um, of course, you know, they, I'm sure they have done all their work with um, what you call ASI, which comes under my, my, my ministry in, in, in connection with, uh, with, with, with ASI. And um, uh, I believe that um, there will be full clearance to make sure that they can meet the, the regulations. I'm here with our junior minister for tourism, Honorable Archibald Christian. Honorable Christian, you have just witnessed what we have themed as a game changer for the BVI, BVI Direct. Tell us more about what you've seen and what you envision to have an impact on the territory as the Junior Minister for Tourism. Thank you very much. Um, I'm happy to, to be a part of this uh, event this morning. Certainly, as the Premier indicated, it's a, it's a game changer for the BVI. We recognize that over the years, many of our tourists who, who have been traveling from the East Coast of the United States uh, were having extremely difficult times get into the BVI. It was taking a very long time to get from Miami, from New York, from Chicago. A trip that should take two and a half hours was taken in some parts, in most parts, a day. Uh, so today's announcement um, shows that the government of the Virgin Islands is extremely serious about ensuring that the visitors arrive in the territory uh, in a short order of time. and as well BV Islanders and, and residents and citizens who also travel to the United States on a daily basis uh, can get to the United States in a, in a fairly reasonable time. Most of us that travel right now, we travel through St. Thomas. Um, and that sometimes has its challenges uh, and sometimes it's more, more expensive. Uh, so from a cost uh, perspective, it's also going to be cheaper for persons to be able to fly directly from the BVI uh, to Miami and vice versa at a lower rate. So I'm excited about uh, this uh, venture that was signed with, that was announced today with BVI Airways and I'm, I'm, I'm confident that uh, the persons and the stakeholders involved, including myself, will do whatever is necessary to ensure that the reputation of the BVI as a premier destination uh, is secured by the announcement of BVI Airways today.
Right now, we're going to go behind the scenes and speak with representatives from BVI Airways who will tell us what the territory and the business community can expect from this new air service. Good morning. My name is Scott Weisman. I'm the chairman of BVI Airways, and we're delighted to be here, delighted to be part of offering direct air service between B Island and Miami. Our plan is to launch service in the end of October, early part of November, flying an 86 passenger regional jet, which will take you from Miami directly to Beef Island in two and a half hours. Our thought is to have two classes of service, 12 seats of first class and uh, 83 seats of luxurious cabin class. Uh, we're excited and believe that this is a great opportunity for the island and the great opportunity for us to change the way one gets back and forth. What are some of the flights that will be offered, some of the connecting services that will be offered from BVI to Miami through BVI Airways? So our thought is to fly in the afternoon out of Miami, which will let people from Europe, the West Coast, and the East Coast of the United States connect directly into Miami. So we're scheduling our first flight probably at 2.30 or 3, which will capture most of the traffic that comes into Miami. As you know, Miami is a major hub for anyone visiting in and out of the island, and it's a major hub for anyone visiting the United States. And the question that's on everyone's tongue, how long would this flight take? We think it'll be less than uh, two and a half hours. Uh, it really, it's a very fast airplane. It's a four engine jet and has the ability to move with a great deal of speed. It's one of the few airplanes that can land on, on, on Beef Island today. So we're excited. We've just witnessed what is considered to be a game-changing event in terms of air access services to the Virgin Islands. Can you tell us more about your company and what the residents can expect from travel services with BVI Airways? Sure. This is a uh, joint venture. My company, I'm a commercial real estate developer and uh, investor in general. Um, and uh, I've joint ventured with uh, Scott uh, Weissman, who has a private equity firm, and Jerry Willoughby, who will be our president um, and chief operating partner. And uh, what's so exciting about this venture, I think, is the ability to really spur on both tourism and development for this country. That uh, as a real estate developer, my initial interest was coming here and looking at some uh, some opportunities, but the uh, the obstacle is really airlift, and I think um, you know the opportunity was really born out of that challenge, and uh, that's what we're hoping to rectify. That uh, we we think this will have a major impact for other developers, bringing um, large capital partners to come in and help uh, create great new opportunities for this country. I'm here with the chairman of the BVI Tourist Board, Mr. Russell Harrigan. We've just had a game-changing announcement from the Premier of the Virgin Islands with regards to direct access to Miami from the BVI. From the tourism perspective, how do you see this affecting the product, the industry, growth? How does the Tourist Board feel about this? I think we're ecstatic about it, actually. Um, in any business venture, whether it's tourism, financial services, or whatever it is, you, you have a product and you have to sell it. So you have a product and there's a market. The question is how do you get your product to the market? In both, the ca in both cases, tourism and financial services, invariably our customers come to us. Um, hence, air access is critical. It, it is the element that is, it is the, that is either going to help you with it, either going to move along or without it, you're going to stagnate and go backwards. For, for some time, the BVI has always been challenged with it. We have gotten to a point um, with it, without it, I should say, um, direct flight, that is, where we have made some progress. The question is, how do we move from this level to the next level? And to be very honest, um, you can't move from this level to the next level without a seamless, fairly consistent and reliable air access into the territory. And getting to Miami is um, the first step. Miami, by its very nature, is an international airport, both in the U.S. and globally. So most countries have flights into that. So it's a good jump-off point for, for us in the BVI. 
The other element that we have to keep in mind is that we compete for our livelihoods with um, other jurisdictions near and far. I mean, immediately around us, I, I mentioned some of them in my own comments, um, uh, Bahamas, um, less so in tourism, but certainly in financial services, Bermuda, Cayman, Turks and Caicos, and Kitchen and others in tourism. And um, if you don't keep up uh, with your competitors, then you're losing your market share to your competitors. And if you lose a market share to our competitors, then the the, the revenue that we earn from tourism, from financial services, whether it's at a governmental level or it's at an individual business level, begins to reduce and dissipate and go away, which means that the population then not as secure as we should be. And that's why we have to um, do what we have to do in tourism to make sure we can continue to survive. Mr. Harrigan, in your remarks, you spoke about diversifying, diversification, and the other sectors that will be impacted by the direct access. Could you expand a little more and let our listeners hear what you envision in terms of economic diversification? Firstly, I think there's, there's certainly diversification within our space, tourism. Um, right now we have started doing, and the Premier's um, instructions in some ways, um, to get more into the calendar events. Uh, we started, for example, the, the Lobster Fest in Anagata, which has tremendous potential. Um, we have a number of other events that go on now, the Spring Regatta and a number of others. We, the Music Fest used to happen. It's, it has um, has been a, a, a bit of a, a dry period there for a number of years, but hopefully that too will come back. There are opportunities in sports tourism that we have considerable facilities. If you look at the fact that we do have at the moment the sports um, complex here, there's a huge facility being built in, in East End, um, in the 7th and the 8th district, and there are other areas of potential. So once you have all of that put together, the piece that's missing increasingly is air access, and it is for us, our duty at the Tourist Board, to try and market it. All of this is intended to make the destination a year-round destination, so that there are no, there are no enormous peaks and valleys, that we have some consistency in the product throughout the year, which means the livelihood and those people who are engaged in tourism don't have to will they make some money in the winter, and then come the summer, they spent it trying to survive. But there can be consistency in the business. And that is good for our economy and it's good for our citizenry. Um, beyond that, there are other areas too that we, areas of opportunity that we have not been able to, to take advantage of. In the financial services space, all the people who know the BVI for financial services reason. If we can get 5% of those people to come to the BVI for tourism reason, we can grow our numbers overnight. The key challenge to doing that is to getting them here. Um, and that's why this flight is terribly important. And I think the Premier said it's a game changer, and he's correct. It is a game changer. And we'll see the benefits of it over time. Um, but I think it's, a, it's, it's the right step um, forward for us as, as a destination for tourism, but also as a jurisdiction um, for financial services. Mr. Johnson, you've witnessed a game-changing event in terms of air access from the BVI to Miami. It has a large impact on the tourism sector, but also in the financial services sector. Could you tell us more from the financial services perspective, and especially as it relates to reaching out to the Latin American sector? how BVI Direct is going to have an impact? Well, it has an imp impact on many levels. Um, I mean, just by virtue of the number of people who live here, who, who are from other parts of the world, um, it makes it much easier for them to come and go. Um, if they have uh, businesses, over, uh, meetings overseas, they travel overseas, being able to go from Tortola to Miami directly is a huge, is a huge deal uh, for anyone that works in the BVI. Um, in terms of some of the things that we are doing to, to grow the industry, um, again, it has a huge impact because we are courting uh, major players from other parts of the world. In their evaluation of the BVI, they're looking at a number of things. Obviously, they're looking at labor issues and, 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 and being able to get the, the, the business licenses and so on. But they're also looking at how practical it is to do business in the BVI. How easily can they get in to set up the business, um, to travel back and forth between the BVI and their head office. So taking out one of those steps in getting to the BVI, whether it's via you know, St. Thomas, via the ferry, or via Puerto Rico, 
makes it a lot easier to do business in Namibia. So we think it's going to be a huge, have a huge impact on financial services and really make it a lot easier for us to engage with and convince um, other players that BVI is right for them and a right place to be. Reporting live, this is Nadia James Harris, GIS Information Officer. Thank you for having viewed this program.